you, Jesus. On July the 3rd, I woke up with a song in my heart, like literally, like before I ever got out of bed. When I woke up, those, uh, some lyrics were on my mind immediately. And I'm real sensitive to, to what, when I first wake up, just if there's something, a verse, or just I feel the impression of the Lord, or just a song. I'm just, I'm sensitive to that because the day hasn't started. You know, you're not distracted. You're not busy. You're just, you're just aware that, you know, God, are you speaking to me? Are you impressing this on my heart and my mind, my soul? So I was very aware of this first thing, and it was the song that says, You are my shield, my strength, my portion, deliverer, my, my, my very strong tower, my present help in time of need. We sing it here, and it was just so, so real. So throughout that morning, it just stayed with me to the point where it was like so, so strong. I was trying to read my word, and it was just in my heart. I called Pat, and I said, you know, I don't know if this is just the encouragement of the Lord that it's so near my heart, or if this is almost like an awareness like I'm reminding you that I am your shield. I am your strength. I am your strong tower. Like almost as if he's preparing us ahead of time. Like something may be coming. You need to remember who I am. Like you need to remember I didn't know. And it just stayed with me. And I called Pat. And so we prayed over our family near and far. You know, we, we prayed over our boys. I literally, it was so strong, even when I got off the phone, that I called my boys and I said, listen, I told them what happened. I said, keep your heart truly sensitive today. Keep your ear open to the Lord. Just, just you know, the mama in me came out, right? The mom in me. And so I, I, I spent some time. I prayed over the church. I prayed over the families of the church. This Thursday, one week later, I wake up the same thing, the same passage of that, the same lyrics. I don't even know the rest of the song. You are my shield, my strength. You know which song I'm talking about? My portion, deliverer, my shelter, strong tower, my very present help in time of need. And y'all probably know the rest of it, but that's the only part that stays with me. It stays with me. Like, it just stays with me. And so I was praying about it, Lord. All right, again, are you encouraging or, or are you warning? Are you encouraging or are you making me aware? Because the Holy Spirit, he does this. He wakens us, right? And so we've been talking for weeks about having the eyes to see, meaning the heart of understanding, to perceive, to discern, to know what God is saying, what he is doing. He's not a dead God. He didn't just come and then Jesus left the earth and then he wrote the word and now we're on our own with just the Bible. We have the Holy Spirit and he leads and he guides and he directs and he is with us every single day. And I believe he still talks to us and he still ministers to us. And so we pay attention to these things. So I began to pray and the Psalm 91 just kept coming to me because it has so much of the same words in it. So we're going to look at this psalm today, and I believe with all of my heart, I don't know if this is for one, if this is for many, I don't know, but I know that it's the word of the Lord, and I know that it has so encouraged me this week. Can you open your word, if you could, to, the, to Psalm 91? I'm going to be reading today from the New American Standard Bible. Psalm 91, we're going to read all 16 verses. This is a very powerful Psalm Psalm 91 reads, He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. For it is He who delivers you from the snare of the trapper and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with His pinions or feathers, and under His wings you may seek refuge his faithfulness is a shield and bulwark. That means like a, a, a mighty strong wall, like a, a defensive wall that you are hidden behind. You will not be afraid of the terror by night or of the arrow that flies by day, of the pestilence that stalks in darkness or of the destruction that lays waste at noon. A thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not approach you. You will... You will only look on with your eyes and see the recompense of the wicked. For you have made the Lord my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place. 
No evil will befall you, nor will any plague come near your tent. For he will give his angels charge concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will bear you up in their hands that you do not strike your foot against a stone. You will tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and serpent you will trample down. Because he has loved me, therefore I, I will deliver him. I will set him securely on high. Because he has known my name, he will call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him. With a long life, I will satisfy him and let him see my salvation. That is such an incredible and a powerful psalm. And when we read this, we have to understand some of this is is written and it's prophetic almost. There's other parts that are written where the psalmist is talking. There's other parts where it's written and it's the psalmist speaking prophetically because he is saying what the Lord has said, right? He is speaking the words of the Lord. It contains some of the same powerful words and promises that he is our shield and our strength and our fortress and our strong tower and our place of refuge. And I don't know about you, but we need that right now in our world. We need it physically. We need it financially. We need it emotionally. We definitely need it spiritually. All of those things apply to this, all of those things, the psalm, it, it is so, so powerful. It, it focuses on the secret place. Its focus is in that hiding place. And it, it is not affected, your hiding place is not affected by the circumstances in your life. There is a place that you can go with the Lord. That it does not matter what is happening in your life, in your surroundings, all around you, in your family. It does not matter. Because there's a place that you can go with him where he will allow you to escape the troubles of this world. And he will speak into your life. It's the truth. It is is just such a powerful psalm. Some believe that this was written by Moses because Moses wrote Psalm 90. And they think because of that and some of the things that are said that maybe Moses wrote it. Others believe that David wrote it because of the language that is used. Either way, both Moses and David, do you understand the incredible, miraculous moves of God in their life that they saw? They saw God come to their rescue, come and deliver them, come and provide for them, come and heal them through all different seasons. So regardless of who wrote it, it is a powerful, powerful Psalm. The psalmist, he reminds us that we are not alone. And that if we belong to the Lord, that there is a place that he has provided for us to know and to go with him where we can know that we have nothing to fear. There is nothing to fear. This psalm, it promises us his presence, his power, his protection, his deliverance, and even his salvation. Meaning not just the initial salvation of you accepting Jesus, but the salvation, the saving grace. Him rescuing you from the troubles that you are, that you are in in this world. But the first two verses are so important. See, this promise is made to those who will abide. Those who will dwell who will tarry and remain in the shelter or in the secret place. In the Hebrew, the secret place is a hiding place. It's a secret hidden covering. It's concealed, that concealed place in the mountain that is not openly displayed to others, like the children of Israel in different places where they would go and they would, they would hide up in the mountain where they were concealed and they could not be spotted by their enemy, but they could look down and see what was coming towards them. It's the secret place. When we were, when I was a kid, I had a hideout. Did any of you ever have a hideout, like a secret hideout? Anybody? Raise your hand. You got a hideout? You had a hideout? We would even take quilts and we would take sheets and we would take pillows and we would build these, these, these things, construct these tents, you know, in different bedrooms. And, okay, this is home base and this is this and this is that. And then we had this on the side of our house. Uh, beside our neighbor, uh, Kelly Lane. She comes here to visit sometimes from North Alabama. Anyway, we had this huge holly bush. I guess it was a holly bush. It was almost like two holly bushes together. But you could get behind that bush, and it was just an area of dirt. You know, there's no grass or anything. The sun couldn't get to it. That was our hideout. That was our place. That's where we played. Do you know even as an adult, you need a hideout? As an adult, you need a secret place. 
you need a place where you can get alone with the Lord. And you may say, well, I don't have that available. You can find a place. Montgomery Bell is a great place to drive if you need to just get alone with Jesus. Go in your room. Go in your bedroom. Close the door. I don't need to be interrupted for a while. We all need a hideout. We need a secret place. I want you to hear these, these verses, these first four verses. I'm going to read this in the Amplified Bible. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will remain secure and rest in the shadow of the Almighty, whose power no enemy can withstand. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust, with great confidence and on whom I rely. For He will save you from the trap of the fowler or the trapper and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you and completely protect you with his pinions, there it is, feathers again. And under his wings, you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and a wall. The faithfulness of God is our shield. It's our protective wall. There's some things I want us to consider this morning in this very powerful psalm. I want us to consider the ways that the Lord has promised to protect those that are his children but those who will take advantage of the secret place. Do you understand? I really want you to hear me this morning. This is not a promise of anyone that just says, I've prayed the prayer and asked Jesus to come into my life. The promises here are for those who will make the time and find a place to get alone with God in the secret place. And the things that he bestows upon you in the secret place, then you get up and you carry with you throughout the day. We got it. You can't say, well, all those promises are mine just because I prayed a prayer and I believe in the name of Jesus. He's saying in the very first verse here, he who dwells in the shelter or the secret place or the hiding place of the most high God will abide in the shadow of the almighty. He will keep close. He will carry you through everything in every circumstance. But first it requires a secret place. It requires it requires that we get alone with God. And this is what he promises us, that if we will do this, this is what he says, I'll protect you from. First thing he says is, I'll protect you from the snare of the trapper. I'll protect you from the snare of the fowler. A snare is a plot or a device, something, or some sort of a, of, of a trap, if you will. It's something, it's that, that bait that is put in a trap that snares you towards something that you don't want to be in. He says, I will protect you. Do you understand Satan is like the master trapper of a believer? He knows what your bait needs to be. Your bait is different than my bait. But what the Lord is saying here is, I will protect you. I'll let you see the bait. I'll let you see the snare before you ever get to the trap. You don't have to fall into the trap. You never have to fall into the trap because he says, because if you're spending time with me in the secret place, there's some things that I will reveal to you and you never have to go there. You never have to go there. You never have to fall because you see the snare before you even see the trap. He says, I will protect you in this way. He will protect us from the snare so that we see what we need to see. He is an amazing, amazing God. He says, I'll protect you from deadly pestilence and plagues. Deadly here doesn't have to mean just a physical death. Deadly. Deadly here means it engulfs ruin. It is very wicked. It engulfs. It surrounds. It's like, it's like a gulf of ruin, a gulf of wickedness. And pestilence here means destruction. What this is saying here is we are promised protection from the destructive attacks of the enemy. He is our defender. He is our shield. He is our refuge. He is our strong tower. He is, the, the enemy is wrecking havoc right now on families, on marriages. It is, it's like, it's bad. And what the Lord is reminding us of is there is a place that you can go and you can get alone with God. And if you will. He will give you rest for your soul. He will reveal his heart to you. He will, he will speak things into your, into your heart and mind. 
as you go before him in prayer, as you go before him in his word, and you get alone. He says, I will, I will safeguard you. I will protect you from the bait of Satan, but I will also, I will protect you from that deadly pestilence, from that engulfing, very wicked destruction that the enemy tries to bring. I will let you see what the enemy is doing. I'll let you see. Then he says, this plague. I'll protect you from the deadly plagues. This is sickness or disease. But hear me. Some people say, well, if you're sick, you must have sin in your life. That is not true. That is not true. Sickness is not something that is here. Sickness is of the devil. Yes, sickness is of the world. But you cannot say, well, because you have sickness that you have sin in your life. I don't believe that. If that was the case, hear me. We would all live to 120, and then we would gloriously just, just go to be with Jesus peacefully in our sleep. I do, however, believe if you have sickness in your life, you need to ask the Lord why. Or is it just your body wearing out? Is it just your body giving out because of, of the, the fallen world that we live in? Or is it because we've allowed things into our heart and into our mind that now are, are, are being processed almost through our physical bodies? And regardless of what it is, he is our healer. He is Jehovah Rapha. And he has said he's still healing today. So we believe this. But here he says, I will, I will protect you from this deadly plague, sickness and disease. But this is particularly talking about the judgment of God. The chastisement and the wrath of God. Hear me. It's like that death angel, the destroyer angel that passed through Egypt. Right? He passed through. And the Israelites had to have the blood on the doorpost because they weren't exempt from the death angel. The blood was the shield. Amen? The blood was the shield. So what this is saying is if you've got the blood of Jesus applied to your life, I am, I am covering you. But there's also a real enemy. There is a destroyer. He seeks to do nothing but destroy and if we will get in the secret place, God is saying, I can protect you from, his, from his, his ploys, his plots. I can protect you from the things that he wants to bring into your life to bring destruction. And then when these, these terrible things happen, do you understand he can save one out of the masses? He can, say, he can cause you not to go on that trip to save you. He can cause you not to answer that telephone call because all they're going to do is just chew you out and it's not the time. He can tell you, you need to get up. I need you to get up and go to the store. Brooks Hill has got an amazing testimony. Two o'clock in the morning, get up and get dressed. And Brooks is like, really, God? I am sleeping. I am tired. And he said, but two o'clock in the morning, God said, get up, put on your clothes, go down to the gas station on the corner. And he thought, what in the world? But he knew it was God. He said it didn't make any sense. But he got up, he put on his clothes, and he went. And when he did, there was an ambulance that pulled him over. He said he first he pulled up and he thought, why am I here? Why am I here? God, was that you? I know that was you. I don't just wake up at 2 o'clock in the morning with this unction. I need to go somewhere. He said he goes, the ambulance is there. There is a person passed out in the bathroom. And so he goes in, and he lays his hand on them, and he begins to pray. And he begins to, to just ask God for mercy. He didn't know if they knew him or not. He didn't know anything about him. He was just there to pray because God woke him up. Months later, he's in a church, and guess who he walks up to? Guess who happens to be at that church? Somehow, I don't remember the story, somehow he finds out this guy life was spared because somebody showed up at this gas station in the middle of the night and prayed for him. It was Brooks. It was Brooks. God miraculously put their path together. Their path together. There's, there's times, he says, I can save you from things if you'll just spend time in the secret place. There are times where punishment of God and the wrath of God is poured out on the earth. But scripture tells us if we know Jesus, we're not intended for the wrath of God. But hear me, but if we're not spending time alone with him, we can be in the wrong place at the wrong time because we're not sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit. And then you can't say, oh, well, God didn't protect me. 
No, maybe God said you just weren't, you weren't spending time alone with me so that I could reveal what I need to reveal to your heart. I'm telling you, he says, I've got a place that you can go where I will reveal so many wonderful things to you. This is what he says. He also says, I'll protect you from terror by night. This word terror means a fearful dread. He says, I will protect you if you will spend time in the secret place. I will protect you at night. At night when you're asleep. Night here also can mean seasons of adversity. Some of you are in seasons of adversity right now. The enemy is just, just coming in or, the, or life is just coming in and there are adverse effects on you. And the Lord is saying, oh, if you'll take time in the secret place, especially these, these terrors by night. God says, I can protect you from night terrors. I can protect you from nightmares. I can protect you from night worries that rob you of sleep. I can protect you from that fearful dread that tries to come over your soul. I can protect you. Psalm chapter 4, verse 8. It says, in peace, I will both lie down and sleep. For you alone, O Lord, dost make me dwell in safety. You alone, O oh God, you saved me from the attacks, you saved me from worries, you saved me from stress, you saved me from fear, you saved me from dread. Oh, but we've got to take that time in the secret place. Then he says this, I'll also save you. I will protect you from arrows by day. So he says, I'm not just with you at night when you're sleeping. I'm also with you during the day. Arrows can be interpreted as darts. Or blows that are meant to inflict a wound. Darts or blows that are meant to inflict a wound. Many times these arrows come by words, by accusations. These arrows fly by day. These arrows are released and they fly by day. When I was reading this, it talked about an arrow as it flies through the air and it flutters around seeking where it's supposed to land. God has a way of protecting us from those arrows, from the darts that come from others and that come from the enemy of our soul during the daytime. Those fiery darts of condemnation, those fiery darts of accusation. There is a way, there is a place, he says, I can protect you from those ungodly thoughts that try to come and stay. Those fiery darts, the attacks from the words of others. He said, I can protect you. I am your refuge, your deliverer, your strong tower. I'm your shield. He shall spend time in the quiet with me, the secret place. If we can just see this, this is what I believe the Holy Spirit is, is, is saying. This is what has been stirred in my heart this week is that I am not alone. You are not alone. And also, you are not vulnerable. You're not vulnerable unless you make yourself vulnerable. Because if you spend time with the Lord, He will empower you and He will equip you for what you need for each day. For each day. He is the most high God. He is the almighty God. And he is on our side. The psalmist, he, he goes through some other verses and he almost begins to, to repeat himself. And he gets to this point where he says, God can save even just the one. He said, others may fall. Even the thousands may fall. They'll fall at your side. You know what this is saying? Some are not going to take time in the secret place. Some are going to get all trapped. Some are going to fall for the snare. They're going to get entrapped. Some are not going to get in the secret place. So what are they going to do? They're going to fearfully dread all of these things. And God is saying, I just want to reveal my heart to you. I want to show you that I'm in, in control. I want to show you that I haven't forgotten about you. I want to show you that I'm working on your behalf. But some... If you don't take time in the secret place. He says some will fall. Some will fall into the entrapments because they'll be snared. Some will fall into dreadful fear. And they'll choose fear over faith. They'll choose dread over peace. He says, but it's all available. Everything's available to every child of mine. As long as you get in the quiet. As long as you get in the secret place. We have to choose. In this in this. This psalm, it's not just talking about the fear that comes over us. He actually uses the word terror. 
We're not just fearful. So many people, they're just, they're terrorized by things. Meaning they are, they are paralyzed in moving forward because they're so stuck right here. And God says, I want to reveal what you cannot see on your own. If you will just find me in the secret place, in the hiding place. He is our protector. And there is no one like him. No one like him. He says, I can find you in the midst of thousands. Thousands may fall, but I can sustain you. I can sustain you if you'll find me in the secret place. Verse 10 tells us that no evil will befall us. Hear me, this doesn't mean that nothing bad's going to happen to you. This just means if you will get with him alone in the secret place. He says no evil. This word evil here means a hurtful, painful, unhappy, miserable, vicious, wicked opportunity to attack you. That's a, lot, that's a lot of negatives right there. He says, and I can show you, I can protect you. No evil will befall you. No evil will make you fall. No evil will be, will, it may come at you, but you will be able to overcome it because he's with you. He will show you what you need to see. He will impress on your heart what you need to know. He didn't say nothing bad's going to happen. He says, when it happens, I'm going to be with you. I'm going to reveal to you what you need to know. Because you've spent time in the secret place. Because you've spent time. He's saying there's nothing, no evil that can overpower or overcome you. Hear me. If we've been in the secret place and he's hiding us under the shadow of his wing, that tells me everything that touches our life has to pass through him first. Everything. Those hard times, everything, they're not his will, but he's aware of them. And he says, and if you'll get in that secret place, I'll give you everything you need for this day to get you through this day. To get you through this day, I'll hold you close. I'll hide you in the shadow of my wing. Verses 11 and 12, the psalmist, I love this part. He says he'll give his angels charge over us. His angels, I know they're all his, but I just imagine this. I told you when I read the word, I just say, God, literally open my eye. Help me to see. Just help me to get a glimpse, oh God, that he sends his angels. He gives them charge concerning us to guard us in all of our ways. It's interesting to me, these are the same words that Satan used against Jesus when he was being tempted in the wilderness. When he came at him, he took these words and he twisted them and left out a part of it because he twisted it and Jesus came right back at him with the truth. Psalm 91, it tells us God has a way to protect us as he sends his angels. Hear me, Hebrews chapter 1, verse 14, it calls these angels ministering spirits sent out to render service to those who have been saved. Do you understand? You may go, well, that's, that's odd. That's not odd. There, there are angels that we are unaware of. There are also, I believe there are angels. There are angels. I, believe, I was in a car accident one time, and I believe with all my heart the person that showed up, that the, when the paramedics got there and said, who are you talking about? I believe with all my heart that it was an angel that God sent to protect me at that time. Pat had an experience, an amazing experience. He shared it before at the Luke, at the Luke, at Luther Lake. And he was, he he was, he, he, he was in a season where he just had to hear from God. And someone approached him. And I mean, it was just amazing, the interaction He said, I believe with all my heart that that was an angel sent from God. There are also mighty angels that we cannot see. They are warring in the heavenlies. I believe if God would just open our eyes to see, we would be amazed at how many times angels protect us that we don't have a clue. I believe we're protected from sickness. We're protected from accidents. We're protected from injuries. We're protected from all these things. It doesn't mean bad things won't come at times. But this is amazing. Listen to what he says. He says, I will give my angels, my angels charge. He doesn't just say, hey, why don't you help me watch out for the kids on earth for a little while? Why don't you help me be extra eyes for my children that are on the earth? He said, no, I'm giving you a charge. 
That means I'm giving you a strict command to go and guard over this one. I've given you, and hear me, they get their command from God and they're responsible to God. If that doesn't give us a sense of peace, he says he gives his angels charge, strict commands to watch out for us, to guard us in all our ways. The sovereign God Almighty who knows all things has sent angels Oh, and then then warring angels. Do you understand? I think we would have so many more troubles if those angels weren't fighting for us. Understand? Oh, man. He is an amazing, amazing, amazing God. But these promises are for those who will stay in the, who will get in the quiet place, in the shelter, in the secret place, and let God minister. Let God minister to them. The psalmist goes on, he reminds us in verse 13 that the Lord has provided a way for us to overcome all the evil that comes against us. All the evil that comes against us. He said, you will tread upon. You will trample over. He didn't say, I'll go take care of it for you. Oh, hear me, this is so amazing to tread upon, to trample over. It means you march over, absolutely keep marching. That means you see it, you see it there, but you're not afraid of it because you know that God is going to take care of it. You know that God is with you. You know that he's with you. He says, if you'll spend time in the secret place, I can reveal these promises to you. I can show you. Hear me, this is so good. He says, you will tread over the lion and the cobra. The lion here represents that fierce enemy that we have that sneaks around, that prowls around looking for who he can devour. At times he's loud. He's a loud, roaring, lying enemy. That will not slow you down if you're spending time in the secret place because you will identify his voice because you know the voice of the Lord. You will identify that lion's voice and you will know That is not my God. I will not. I will not receive that thought. I will not be fearful. I will not believe that lie. He said, and you'll just keep on marching. You'll just tread. You'll just keep right on walking. Oh, man. He's so good. He said, and over the cobra. The cobra we know is a snake. It's a serpent. It represents that venomous poison that is is released. That venomous poison that comes either from the words of others or from the the, the twisted thoughts, the way the enemy gets in and twists thoughts. Do you know that in the Hebrew, cobra means twist? It means twist. God is so good. He is saying you will absolutely tread over, trod over, march and absolutely keep marching over those twisted words. They will not have power over you. You will, they will not have power over you any longer. He says, I want to show you this. Oh, I want to show you this in the secret place. I'm telling you, for months, for months, I struggled with some words that had been spoken. And I knew who I was and I knew who I belonged to. And I knew what God was doing in my life. And in the last probably month and a half, two months, man, God has made, made this so real to me. So real. You get in the secret place. He will reveal to you the truth. He can untwist anything that the enemy has twisted. He can show you those things that were meant to harm and to hurt. And he says, oh, but my grace is greater than all of those things. He wants to to show us these things. He said, this is all provided, all these wonderful things. All of this protection is provided to you from others, from the world that we live in. Just life that is hard. From the devil, from Satan and all his demonic forces. He said, there's a place, there's a protection. Oh, you can find me in the secret place. But this promise, hear me, it's like RSVP. There's reservation only. These promises, you can say, well, I'm standing on the promises of God. And he says, yes, but if you want to be able to see what you need to see and let me protect you like I need to protect you, it's going to require some quiet time. It's going to require time in the secret place. 
The psalmist reminds us then, he reminds us in verse 14, he said, I'm going to deliver, I'm going to set you on high, those who know my name. I will set you on high. I will provide a way for you to escape the attacks, the trials, and the troubles of this world. But it's going to require the secret place. To set you on high, it means he literally sets you securely on high. When I read this in the Hebrew, it means he makes you unaccessible. The enemy may try, but he can't get to you until he passes through the Lord. He passes through him. He has to get permission. I will set you on high. I will put you in a place and make you unaccessible. They cannot capture you. The words, the attacks, the lies, anything. It cannot. We know David prayed this in in Psalm 59.1. He said, deliver me from my enemies, O my God. Set me securely high away from those who rise up against me. The Lord says, I want to do the same. I want to do the same for you. Whatever it is that's coming against you, the adversities of life. He has promised us deliverance and safety and protection from our enemies on earth and our spiritual enemies, the demonic forces of of Satan himself. He said, by those who love me and are known by my name, hear me. Scripture says that if we love him, we will keep his commandments. That means if we love him, we're going to do what this word of God says to do. We're going to refrain from what it says to refrain from. We're going to strive to please the Lord according to his word. If we love him. It also says by those who are known by my name. Like this is obvious. You belong to the Lord. We had a a meeting with some people this weekend with a couple. We were talking to them and I said, let me ask you this. If you were to pass tonight, do you know that you know that you know you would be with the Lord? That you would go to heaven? Because if you don't, that could be the root of a lot of the problems. They're not here. They don't even go to our church. So I can say this. One of them said, well, I think so. The other one said, I doubt it. You know what they said after that? But I believe in God. I believe in God and I believe in Jesus. So I don't know, maybe, maybe I would. It's not about believing in God. It's not about believing in Jesus. It's about a relationship. It's about a relationship with Jesus. He has given us another helper one like him, through the Holy Spirit. It's as if Jesus is still with us today through the power of the Holy Spirit on the earth. Verses 15 and 16, God has promised us not just protection, he said, but for those who will intimately know me. He said, I will answer you when you call on me, when we call on him. He said, I'll be with you. When the, stru- when the storm comes, when the trouble comes, I will be with you. He says, I will rescue you when you need it. Then he says, I will honor you. What he's saying there is, I'll make you honorable. I'll make you honorable. It's the, it's the perception that others will have. I'll make you honorable. Then he says this, I will satisfy you with a long life. And I will let you behold my salvation. He will let us see, perceive, discern, and know that he has got it. That he is our rescue. That he is our strength. That he is all that we need. That he's our victory. He's our victory. He will reveal all of this to us. And as I prepare to close, I have to go back to this first verse because everything, all the requirements of these wonderful promises, all these wonderful things, he said, I'll do for you. It's all found here. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. He who dwells, that means to remain, to tarry, to sit down and stay a while. We don't just go and think about him just throughout the day. We take time to quiet our soul before God. He says all these Wonderful things are available. That shelter, 
If you'll dwell there, the shelter is a secret place. In the Hebrew, it means a hiding place. A secret hidden covering, that concealed place in the mountain that's not openly displayed to others. That place where you're safe from the attacks of others. That place where you're safe from the lies of the enemy. That place where you're safe from the fears and the worries of the world. There's a hiding place. I remember everybody, you know, Corey Ten Boone. Anybody know, everybody, lots of people, you know, Corey Ten Boone. You know the name, Corey Ten Boone. She, she wrote that book, The Hiding Place. And if you understand, she was a Holocaust survivor. And, and part of her story is this. She was put in one of, the, in, in one of the, the camps, one of the tents or one of the housing spaces where she was put became flea infested. Like literally flea infested so badly that the guards would not go in there. They would toss their food into them, but they would not go in. They wouldn't even go in to gather them when it was time for them to be taken, to be burned, to be killed. The fleas, <laughs> as horrible as that would be, the fleas, that horrible time, the horrible time, saved her life. It was her hiding place. She, she was safe from, really, it saved her life. It was difficult. But God was with her in the midst of it. Oh, and that's, that book is amazing. The stories are amazing. You understand, whatever you're going through, whatever you are going through, God has got, he's got an answer for you. He's got, he's, he's got a peace that passes all understanding. He's got a joy that can fill your life that doesn't make sense, and it will give you strength. He has got a hope that he can put in you. That it, but it requires we take time in the secret place. That we sit down. And we just abide in his presence. Psalm 121 says the Lord is our keeper. He's our keeper. Isaiah 25, 4 says, For thou hast been a defense to the helpless, a defense for the needy in their distress, a refuge from the storm, a shade from the heat. For the breath of the ruthless is like a rainstorm against the wall. Talks about those ruthless words, those hard words that come against us. And he's that place where he subdues the noise. But we have to be in him. We have to get alone with him. Isaiah 32, 2 and 3. This was a prophetic, it's a prophetic writing. It's talking about when Jesus comes. Some of the soon coming king or, 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 or king for us. This is what's available to us. It says, and each will be like a refuge from the wind, a shelter from the storm, like streams of water in a dry country, like the shade of a huge rock in a parched land. Then the eyes of those who see will not be blinded, and the ears of those who hear will listen. If you get alone with God in the secret place, he says, I can promise you all these things, shelter from the storm. I can give you streams of living water. The Holy Spirit is likened to streams of living water that will never run dry. Oh, he's amazing. For weeks, I've had this for literally for t about 10 days since July the 3rd. This has been rolling around in my heart, rolling around in my heart. Matthew, will you guys come, please? Hallelujah. We have been talking for the past three weeks about the importance of being able to see what the Lord desires us to see. Like to have that discernment. Is this you? Is it not? What is your truth? You know, what would you like me to do? How, what, you know, to follow his ways. The greatest place for you to know the will of God. The greatest way for you to know the will of God is not to ask another person. First, we go to the Lord. Get alone with God. It doesn't, it, it doesn't matter who you are. If we will humble ourselves 
unto the Lord. Seek his face. He will reveal his heart to us. He will reveal his heart. He says, if you will do this, if you will dwell there, remain there, find that place of shelter in that secret place. It didn't say you can abide. It said you will abide. Do you know what that tells me? If you take that time to be with him, oh, he's going to go with you the rest of the day. He will remind you of what he just showed you. He'll remind you of the things that he said. He will remind you that he is with you. Everything in this word is conditional. Everything in this word is an opportunity. It's an offering. It's like, if you will do this, then I will do that. This is the same thing. If you will come and abide with me. He said, I will go with you. I will. Oh, you'll be so close. I will hide you. In the shadow. Oh, do you understand? That means he'll he'll be close to us. No matter what comes our way, he will be close and we will know it. He said, you'll see your salvation. You'll know he's with you. You won't have to wonder. He's an amazing God. saying that those lyrics I bet I've sang them a hundred times in ten days he's an amazing God and he is doing amazing things in the earth but the devil wants us to focus so much on what we are missing what we don't have what our problems are he wants to fill us full of fear full of worry full of doubt and God is saying if you'll just quiet your soul and get in that hiding place get in that place he will reveal everything that you need oh he is amazing hallelujah he's promised to deliver us to defend us, to guard us, to protect us he's promised us protection in our health and in our minds and in our emotions and in our sleep He's promised us peace in the night and in the day. In the day, He's promised us an escape from the words and the thoughts and the accusations. He's promised us con- from from a, a release or a reprieve and a and a freedom from the condemnation. And He provides us a supernatural divine protection. He is amazing, amazing. Could you stand to your feet this morning? Hallelujah. together.
Lord God. Lord, show people how to get there. If they'll just take the step to find a place, a time behind a closed door or where they're secluded and others aren't there and it's just them and you. Father, show them how. Those that have never even visited because they just don't know how, Holy Spirit, will you just stir in them to make a commitment to have an expectancy that when they go behind the closed door or they go to that place that you're going to meet them there. Father, you're more excited about meeting them there than they are about even the possibility that you're going to be there. So I pray, Lord, stir up that hungering, that thirsting for righteousness and just for a closeness and for a place where they can just hear from you. And if they've got things that they need to make right with you while they're there, God, that's a great time. You'll meet them there in mercy all their sins and unrighteous deeds you'll wash and cleanse away as they just say forgive me let nothing keep the people of God from the presence of God and from a place God where they can dwell intimately with you in safety and we thank you for instructing us and showing us in so many places through your word today that it's your design and your plan God it's your desire to meet us there show us how You said if we seek you, we will find you. So help people to make that step this week, God, and to meet you there. Thank you for the testimony, God. I I prophesy that. People will come back saying, I met God like I've never met him before because I stepped into that place and he met me there. I thank you for that, my God, for this precious group of people that seeks your face together. Lord, We love you today and we thank you in Jesus' name.